All right, I've set up a little demonstration that hopefully will help illustrate how dangerous deficit spending can be if it gets out of control. Here we have a map of the United States, and I've populated it with people. Well, not people. I couldn't find any human action figures, so I used dinosaurs instead. Who knows, they probably were the first Americans here anyway. So just pretend that they're people. Like up here you have me in the Northwest, and here are my parents in the Midwest, and down here is my aunt in Florida. There are Super Bowl MVP Drew Brees in New Orleans. Out here in Hollywood you have Han Solo, and uh, actually he probably doesn't belong on this map. He's not even an American. He's from a galaxy far, far away. But up there in the Big Apple there's Iron Man. Uh, maybe I ought to just get on with the demonstration. I'm letting my imagination get carried away with me here. Okay, so what we do in order to survive is we work. That's how wealth is created. You can't have wealth without work. Now there are some natural resources which have intrinsic value, gold, oil, other raw materials, but even they require work in order to be utilized. They have to be mined, processed, refined, whatever it takes in order to make them useful. The bottom line is, is that wealth doesn't just happen. It has to be created. It's so easy for us to take for granted all the wealth that's already been created in this country by those who came before us. You might walk into a building in the town in which you live and not even give it a second thought. If it's older than you, you might just assume it's always been there. It hasn't. Somebody had to build it. And all the work that we do in an official capacity, when it's added up, makes up our economy. It's called the GDP, our gross domestic product. I have a bottle of water here, and I've colored it green, and that represents our economy, the GDP. And it's green because green is the color of money, and money is the unit of measure we use to gauge the size and strength of the economy. Over here, on the East Coast, I've taped a funnel to the end of the table. That is the federal government. Look at the size of that funnel compared to the map, because those proportions are just about right. The federal government is huge. It's massive. It's, it's like my uncle after Thanksgiving dinner, and it's gorging itself on the American worker. And what it does in order to operate is it takes money out of the economy, it takes work that's been done, and funnels it through itself to fund its programs. Take a look at the end of this funnel though. You can see that the hole in it is bigger than the tube coming out of this water bottle. That's because the government is spending more money than it's collecting. A lot more. In essence, it's spending money that hasn't been created yet. It's spending wealth that has not yet been created. It's spending work that Americans haven't done yet. And it's spending it right now. So where does it get this money then? Well, it borrows it. It borrows the money from creditors. And the money that it borrows, when added in with the money that it collects from the economy, is enough for it to fund its programs. But there's a problem with that. Our budget deficit is getting so huge that our creditors are getting nervous. They're starting to think that they're not going to see repayment on those loans. And they're probably right. And there's going to come a point at which they're going to say, that's it, we're not going to loan you any more money until we start to see some repayment on those loans. And even if they do continue to loan for a while, the interest on that debt is getting so large that it's already become one of the largest federal programs all by itself. So what can the government do if it can't borrow money any longer? Well, there is a little trick it can resort to called monetizing the debt. What it does is it prints off money and it pumps it into the economy. But the problem with that is that it's not backed by any real wealth. It's just increasing the money supply. I've taken another water bottle here, and I've just filled it with clear water. And I've got a bowl, and I'm going to take some money out of the economy, and I'm going to pour it into this bowl, and then I'm going to pretend that I'm the federal government, and I'm going to print some money off and pump it out into the economy. And you can see what happens here is 
the water in the bowl has become lighter than the water in the water bottle. And that's what happens when you monetize the debt. It weakens the dollar. It leads to inflation. And unless we want to become like Zimbabwe, monetizing the debt is only an option for so long. So what can the government do in that event? If it can't borrow the money, if it can't print the money, but it still needs to fund its programs, the only option it has left is, take, is to take a larger share of wealth out of the economy. It has to raise taxes. But you can see the problem with that is that in order to keep the economy at its current size or even growing, Americans have to work harder. They have to become more productive. And there will be a point at which tax increases will hurt the economy and have a negative effect. Now, of course, there's a, an easy solution to all this. It's so simple that the politicians in Washington can't seem to figure it out. The problem isn't here. Hey, I haven't say hi to my cat. The problem is here. What we need to do... Ivan's going to destroy my map here, but we're almost done, so hang with me. We need to shrink the size of government. We need to reduce spending. And if we bring spending in line with money that the government collects from the economy, we'll bring the budget into balance, and the, co the economy can continue to grow and prosper. Americans continue to enjoy a healthy lifestyle and things will be well. But nobody in Washington seems to have the political willpower to do that. Nobody is willing to make the tough choices. We have to convince them that it's in their interest to do that. And I've set up a website, I've mentioned it in my other uh, videos, it's called spendenforcer.com. And my plan is to send a message to Washington loud enough to make them listen. The government is hemorrhaging America's wealth. It's up to us to stop it. Please go to spendenforcer.com and visit the meter on page 2 of the website and add your voice to that meter. Thank you.